we are at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center and we are doing our first virtual photo walk. And we're about to introduce you to two black amazing bears. So let me just switch you guys around. And who do we have here? Um, the names of the bears are Kuma and Uli. These are Kuma and Uli. Let me get a little bit closer. Very cool. How cool is that, Marty? So cool. So these are two and of the bears that are at the preserve. There are two of the bears that are preserved. Which, which one? Are, which one is which? Now, were they um, rescue Kuma bears, Marty? Or what's what's the reason for them being there now? All the salmon, the females. Uli is the one getting all of the salmon right now. Ah, uh, feeding time. Can you see? Can you see Uli eating? Yes. And tell me a little bit about Uli and Kuma. Kuma was found on the streets of Juneau, just walking up and down the sidewalk, like the lost puppy. A real little, big enough to fit in the shoebox and fishing game center up here. She was really little, about the size that she could fit into a shoebox, a fishing game center up here. And Uli was found near Denali Park. Somebody was building a cabin. Can you guys see really well? Yes, it's perfect. Great signal. Great video and audio. So they're feeding them salmon right now. They're feeding them salmon right now. Yeah. And I might have to go over there and. Very cool. And how much how much salmon do they get? How many times a day do they eat, Marty? How many times a day do they eat? We feed them throughout the day. They're like we should be, you know, grazing and not one or two big meals. Yeah, we heard the, we heard the little growl in the background there. They're really hungry. And they're actually yeah. eating carrots as well and apples, so very healthy. Mm -hmm. Is that granola as well? Yeah, peanut butter, butter, granola with honey on top. What's the temperature like up there in Alaska right now? Um, it's starting to drop. I would say the temperature today is probably in the teens. It's probably in the teens. Wow. I think it was minus, I think it was like around eight degrees on our way in today. Mm-hmm. So, Mar Marty, I have another question for you. Yes. Or for the people there. Um, when the bears are in captivity like that, do they hibernate like they would in the wild? Like, do they hibernate like they would in the wild? Yeah, they hibernate. Yeah, they hibernate. And they have a little cabin. Let me show you guys the cabin. Can you see it in the distance? Yes. So that's hibernation and luxury? That's hibernation and luxury. <laughs> that was an abandoned cabin? Yeah, they just go in there and make a So they, they, have it, they have it nicer than most of us that'll go camping. I think I want to start coming over here and going camping with the bears from now on. <laughs> And they're very friendly. They're right up to the, they're very close to us right now. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can get a little closer for you guys. How old were they, Marty, when they were rescued? One of them was just a cub when he was rescued. How old, would you say? Oh, both of them were just as big as guinea pigs. It's almost like they want to come out and say hello. Yeah. But I, I would imagine that you still have to be cautious of them, even though they were raised in captivity. I, they're still a wild animal. They're still a wild animal, of course, yeah, but yeah. he said that they probably just nibble on you. But I don't know if I want to take the risk today. No, their, their nibble is like a big bite, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to experiment with that. Okay, we're headed over to the next one. We'll surprise you when we get there. Right. I apologize. It's a little shaky on the way. Yep. So where are we headed now, Mike? We're gonna go this way. Over here to the links. We oh. Jeremy, you want me to carry that? You got we it? are headed to the links now. So we're headed to the links now. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a links before. Wow, they're awesome. Okay, I don't know if you guys if you can see them. Can you see them? Jeremy will get them down. Okay, Jeremy's yeah. going to get them down. Yeah, we see the we see the log through the fence. Oh, I see them up there on the uh, coming down towards us. I see them coming. Here, let me see if I can get you guys a closer view. Do you see them? Yes. 
Oh, see, these guys, they, they want their meat. They got some meat waiting for them at the bottom. Uh. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about the lynx. Um, they are rescued by a firefighter. During the summer of 2004, a working firefighter spotted month-old kittens in a recently burned area in interior Alaska. Three kittens were found alone and suffered from burns on their paws, legs, faces, and ears. Mm -hmm. The whereabouts of the mother was unknown. Uh, had she died in the fire, uh, she, they have no idea, but she left some kittens behind but carried as many as she could as she fled to safety. In need of treatment and knowing the kittens could not survive on their own, the firefighter put them into his backpack and carried them back to camp where he could make arrangements for their transport. Unfortunately, one male kitten died soon after, he, after the rescue, but the two females were flown to Anchorage Airport and transported to Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center for treatment and care on July 20th. In the wild, Lynx stay with their mothers for almost a year in order to learn hunting and survival, survival skills. Since these lynx were orf orphaned at such a young age, a permanent home has been provided for them here. Very cool. So it's really cool. Possibility to take one of these home? Are they, uh, <laughs> are they as friendly as regular cats? Jeremy gets closer than I do, but I won't get that close. <laughs> Mike won't get very close. Jeremy, over here, on the other hand, he's got the meat, so. Yeah. So how old are these guys now? They're about eight years old now, so they came when they were just babies. Is are they possible? considered kittens when they first came? Oh, yeah, they were only as big as hamsters. They were only as big as hamsters when they first arrived here. Wow. The guys did a great job up there, huh? Oh, it's amazing. If... if for all that haven't been here, if you come to Alaska, you definitely have to come to the Wildlife Conservation Center. It's hey, Matt, beautiful. Can you, set, can you set them up on a two-shot? That's your screenshot, everybody. <laughs> and if anybody, oh, there's a to bomb be, eagle. If anybody happens to be grabbing some interesting screenshots and you want to share them on the event page, you know, feel free to do that. And there's a bald eagle behind us that I'm gonna, just going to have to show you guys as well. Yes, you will. So let me see. It's getting really yucky here. Can you see it? Oh, in the distance there in the tree. Yeah. He's just hanging out, enjoying the, enjoying the windy, cold weather. Uh, I don't know if the eagle's coming. Oh, but look who we have here. Somebody came back to get a little closer. Oh, there we go. Get him, get him to look at the camera and smile. Give your smile for us, Mr. Lynx or Mrs. Lynx. Or Miss Lynx. <laughs> they are both females. Are they about as big as they get? Will they grow anymore? They're not going to grow anymore, right, Mike? They're probably about as big as they get at eight. This is about as big as they get. That's about the size of a bobcat, Jamie's asking. Is that true? About the size of a bobcat? But they don't have a tail. Yes. Hmm. They're bigger than bobcats. So for everybody that's watching, you know, Marty's moving to the next location to show us porcupines, I think, is where she's headed to right now. She showed us some beer and... And hopefully most of you are in your house right now so that you don't have to experience this right now because it is cold and windy and very, and my feet are frozen, so. <laughs> and I was going to say, we appreciate you so much, you know, going through this for us. You could be at the comfort at the studio, but going out on location for us like this in, in that type of weather in Alaska, we, we appreciate it very much, Monty. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you all about the porcupine we have here. Jeremy, okay. what's, what is his name? His name is Snickers. This is Snickers, <laughs> but not the kind that you want to eat. They are the second largest rodent in North America. 
Can you see Snickers? Yes, we can. So Snickers is pretty friendly, huh, Jeremy? Does anybody have any questions about porcupines? Oh, look at Snickers. Snickers is really cute. <laughs> I never thought I would say that about a porcupine. Okay, we're headed over to go meet a moose now. Okay. Everybody ready? Let's go. Bye, Snickers. Snickers is too busy eating, so I don't even think he minds that we're leaving him. Can you see Mike and the moose? Oh, wow. Where's the best place to go, Jeremy? Okay. Oh, much better in here. It's nice and warm, too. Or warm. Actually, I take that back. He's going to get the moose for everybody. Cool. I think I might have to pet one of these when they come around. <laughs> you see them? Yes. So TJ is asking, how much the moose typically weigh, Marty? <laughs> how much would you say a moose typically weighs? The big one over there is getting close to about 900 pounds. I wouldn't want him stepping on me. Hi, guys. I'm petting my first moose. I'm going to grab your glove. <laughs> you want to Sure. Here you go. Who is this? That one is... That is Nelson. Nelson? It looks like the little one. I can't tell him. Come here, Nelson. Oh, that's Nelson right here. This is up. Uh, I wouldn't normally do this in the wild for everybody at home. Oh, who do we have here? Oh, look at this guy. If anybody in the hangout has questions for Marty, feel free and unmute and ask away. We want you to be part of this as much as you'd like to be. They're going to start growing their antlers any time now, and all of these moose that you see here, they're all boys. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see them growing in their antlers. Yeah. Do they ever get aggressive? Do these guys ever get aggressive? I know in the wild they do. Um, they can, but not too bad. This time of year they're real calm. They can, but this time of year they're very calm. And you guys are looking at some movie stars here. They, they've gone in their uh, horse trailer and gone downtown. They've been in a couple movies. Oh, wow. <laughs> so these are the friendliest of the moose that I would probably ever want to meet. <laughs> Because we're always warned, if you're ever out, you don't want to pet. You definitely don't want to pet a moose, especially not a wild moose. So, Marty, give us give us the uh, the fifty cent bus tour. As we're looking out the window to you know straight away and to the left and right from the tour bus, you'll see. Please keep your hands and feet inside the bus at all times. <laughs> well, of course we have our we have our driver over here, Mike Miller. Mike, what would you like to say to everybody? Oh, I said I'm glad we're able to experience this, and I hope they can feel the cold like we're feeling, and it's sort of nice. If this was November, October, we'd go, oh, we got a whole winter of this, but now that it's almost April, it doesn't bother us. We can sort of laugh at it. <laughs> it feels good, it feels brisk. 
Hi, guys. Here are the caribou. Oh, now they're getting up to come see you. Perfect. Can we come in? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going to come in with the caribou. They don't eat meat. They're They don't eat meat. They're very tame. The big one is Bert. He's he's very tame. He even goes around to schools. And he has the most antlers on him too. It looks like you can see their antlers starting to grow like pumpkins. They start to grow real quick. Watch when they walk. See if they can hear their hoofs click. Can you hear them? Can you hear their hoofs click? Their tendons in their hooves. They have tendons in their hooves. And that's what clicks. And it, there's no reason for it, or good or bad, but when you hear a herd of caribou go by, you can hear the clicking out there on the tundra because all their hooves click like that. With reindeer, you know the um, Christmas rhyme that goes up on the rooftop, click, click, click? That's what that means. So the Christmas rhyme, I don't know if you just heard Mike. But they up on the rooftop, click, click, click. That's because of the tendons in their feet and their hooves. Probably the closest we're going to be able to get to anything today because it's starting. the weather's starting to get really bad here. Yeah. Amazing. And we're ready for spring here. And if you can send some warm weather our way, we'll be very excited. And I think that we might be losing you guys as well soon. Thank you to you, Marty. You did a great job. Thank you very much for taking us to see wild life in Alaska. It was very interesting, very exciting to see your place that you call home. <laughs> and, uh, we appreciate you taking Any us along with us. Anytime. And now that we know how to do a virtual photo walk, we'll take you on anyone that we can. Perfect. And for everybody in the Hangout and watching live on YouTube to learn more about virtual photo walks, Please feel free and visit virtualphotowalks.org.